Well, uh, thank you very much, Daniel, and uh, thank you all for joining us for the first Cube Day India. Uh, my name is Sayam Patak, and I'm the field CTO at SIVO uh, and one of the event chairs for this event. And uh, we have a very incredible day planned uh, with some excellent uh, sessions on Kubernetes and CNCF hosted projects. That's right. And my name is Nancy Chauhan. I'm a developer advocate at LocalStack, CNCF ambassador, and the other event chair of Cube Day India. I'm glad to see everyone today. Cube Day events are designed to connect interna international and local experts in global cities like Bengaluru with adopters, developers, and practitioners to deliver quality educational experience. We have an incredible day planned with some excellent tracks on Kubernetes and other CNCF hosted projects. And today you'll get a chance to interact with leaders in community in our beginner and advanced tracks. Before we get started, I um, would like to thank uh, give a big thank you to the sponsors. So our diamond sponsors, ENY and New Relic. Our gold sponsors, Cast and Site 24 by 7. And lastly, uh, the local sp supporters and startup sponsors, uh, Abilitics, AppScode, Equinox, and Initialize. Uh, their support helped bring this event to uh, Bengaluru. I also want to remind everyone that our sponsor showcase is open in the convention center foyer. This will be open until 6.30 PM, including breaks and lunch. So be sure to stop by and check it out. Our lunch will be served uh, in the landscape, and uh, our serving reception is the sponsor booth crawl. Uh, the sponsor booth crawl will be happening in the convention center foyer right after our last sessions, starting at 5.30 PM. Uh, at the reception, you can enjoy the drinks, appetizers, and connect with your fellow attendees. Uh, be sure to stick around till the end uh, because of Cube Day raffles starting at 6.20. You won't want to miss uh, winning amazing prizes. And lastly, please remember that we have event code of conduct that everyone attending has agreed to abide by, and that will be enforced. In short, everyone should feel welcome and included. Please treat everyone with respect and professionalism. And if you have any concern, please go to the registration desk, and the event team will assist you. Well, uh, without further ado, uh, we would like to kick off with the keynotes with our talk, uh, which is Cloud Native Sustainability, how you can help right now. Awesome. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Today, we are going to talk about cloud native sustainability, how you can help right now. But before we start, I just want each one of you to take a couple of seconds and think that why sustainability matters. Now, whether it is about uh, a country like Indonesia shifting their capital from Jakarta to Borneo because of the rising sea levels, because uh, of the global warming, we all know that environment affects us all. And with more rapid digitization, software plays an important role. So we should be concerned about how software applications can be made more sustainable. Now, if we see some facts and figures, um, we see that IT sector, that means we are responsible for 2% of global carbon emissions. And this is going to increase to 12% by 2040, which is a huge amount. I mean, this is a significant number. And the, the agenda of this talk is to initiate the discussion, because this is such, a, such an important discussion which we should be concerned about. So I just want to discuss about the CNCF initiatives in this uh, area. So we have a technical advisory group for environment sustainability, uh, which is CNCF technical advisory group for environment sustainability. I'm going to tell you more about it. There are different projects in it. Uh, the mission statement is the tax goal is to advocate for develop and support and help evaluate environment sustainability initiatives in cloud native technologies. This tag will identify the values and possible incentives for service providers to reduce the consumption and carbon footprint through cloud native tooling. Now, there are four different projects in this, which are landscape, community advocacy and outreach, green reviews, blogs, and demos. The first one is landscape. Um, now, if you're concerned about uh, if your team is new and they don't know how to adopt the sustainable practices, this could be the first point of reference. So we have a website of Tag Environment Sustainability uh, where we have summarized all the current sustainable initiatives in the cloud native spaces. We have research, 
the white paper. So you can just go to this page and you can figure out uh, what sustainable, what toolings you can adopt. And if you want to contribute, you can also contribute as well. Then we have Green Review Working Group, uh, which helps CNC project to review their cloud native sustainability footprint. So it helps the project and the project maintainers to check the sustainability footprint. And then they provide guidelines of how they can make their software applications more sustainable and efficient. So one of the leading principles is SEI. If you can, yeah. One of the leading principles is SCI, which is, uh, which is uh, the carbon, uh, the carbon, uh, the number which you can uh, find out, uh, which is given by the Green Software Foundation. The next one is uh, blogs and demos. Um, so we have a blogs, we have different blogs. You can contribute as well. You can raise the PR. And there are monthly demos of projects we had like for Kepler. Um, and you can, if you want to add yourself uh, to the agenda, so you can just come and say hi to the Tag Environment Sustainability channel in the CNCF Slack. Because it's very easy to just say hi and uh, start. Open source people are amazing. And yes, this picture just uh, justifies that. Uh, this picture, uh, which has like so many happy faces, uh, it's about community advocacy and outreach. Uh, so the reason you're listening today, and maybe you'll get back to your teams, and you'll talk about sustainability, and maybe you'll discuss that let's adopt sustainable practices, you become a part of this community, right? And uh, due to that, we had the uh, Sustainability Week. Uh, which was the these, are the, the, these are the amazing pictures of the Sustainability Week, which happened in the month of October. Now coming, uh, what we can do on the individual level and the organization level to reduce the energy usage. The first step is to measure it uh, by the tools like Kepler, which Sayam is going to talk about in detail, uh, so that you can take an action. And this is something which most of you must be already doing. Like, you must be shutting down the environment to save the cost, right? So you're already being a part of this thing, but you need to adopt more toolings to become a part of it. So with this, over to Sayam. Amazing. Uh, so by now, um, you should have a gist of like, we know now that sustainability is important. We know that within CNCF, uh, there is a lot of work which is going on. Uh, so this is the sustainable cloud native computing landscape that you can see. Uh, so it has the infrastructure level stuff, observability, uh, data centric stuff like the open compute project, um, and then the efficient methodologies to even uh, get more information and do the advanced schooling within the data centers, smart data centers. And for example, the observability, like there are existing tools like GVisor, Green Metrics tool, which is the framework for uh, measuring the energy. Uh, you have Telegraph Collector, like the Intel PowerStat that gives you the CPU and uh, the DRAM power uh, consumption uh, metrics. Kepler is there. Coming to the infrastructure, it is further divided uh, into the scheduling, scaling, and the resource tuning. So you can have a carbon-aware Kubernetes scheduling. Uh, then you can have KEDA-based, event-driven, auto-scaling based on that, and uh, the resource tuning as well. Now we'll try to figure out how we can use some of the existing projects today that we have and kind of go back and try to use it within your current ecosystems. So first is the Kepler, which is a CNCF project, uh, comes uh, under the sustainable computing. So it is an um, Kate's efficient power exporter EB, that uses eBPF under the hood to capture the metrics. And then it sends that to the machine learning models. The machine learning models then enriches the data and gives you and maps the per pod consumption, gives you the carbon emissions for that and export it as Prometheus metrics with which you can create fancy dashboards. Uh, so in Kubernetes ecosystem, you very well know there is a node. Uh, in the node, we have uh, pods. Pods, we have single multiple containers. Containers are the Linux processes and everything that runs as uh, the Linux processes to the energy consumption with respect to CPU, RAM, GPU, and, and things like that. So how do we measure? We do the workarounds. So how do we do the workarounds is uh, for the capacitance and the frequency. Uh, capacitance for the number of uh, CPU circuits. We, for the number of circuits, we calculate by the number of CPU cycles. And for every circuit, we read from the uh, counters, like the APERF counter, et cetera. So that's how the mapping is done. This is how the Grafana dashboard looks like. Uh, this is the sample one. You can create your own with the metrics which is exported. And, but they give out of the box very neat Grafana dashboards pre-built uh, for the per namespace, per pod, all these uh, consumption metrics that you are having with respect to each uh, carbon emission uh, for each pod. Uh, so some, in summary, uh, you have metrics captured using eBPF, sent to machine learning models, which will be online or offline. And then you have uh, generated meaningful data 
and you can create the dashboards. Now that you have the metrics installed, you can use another project which is called Cube Green, which is an operator to reduce CO2 uh, footprint of your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, for example, you have dev stage prod clusters, and there are like which runs 24 by 7, which runs like thousands of pods, uh, and you don't always need certain stuff running in your dev and stage environment, so you can shut it down. And you know now the carbon emissions related to those with Kepler. So what you do is you install KubeGreen as the operator, uh, you create a custom resource, so like the sleep info uh, custom resource is there, so it says uh, every weekday, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., shut down the workloads, except you can exclude all the workloads that are mandatory that you do not want to shut down. So with this, you can uh, use uh, some of the existing projects in conjunction to create a meaningful use case for your cloud native applications that are deployed on Kubernetes. Uh, so you measure the energy consumption using Kepler and then use Cube Green to scale down to zero. Uh, with this, like uh, getting involved in the community, Nancy has already covered. So you can have, you can join the tag. Uh, you can contribute to any of the existing tools if you are working on. Uh, you can contribute that as well and read the open source guides and articles. Well, uh, with that, uh, our next sponsored keynote uh, speaker is Zamir Fozan. Uh, so Zamir is a senior developer relations engineer at New Relic, and today he will discuss about the CNCF uh, sandbox project called Pixie, which is an open source observability tool offering instant visibility into Kubernetes application through eBPF. Uh, we will see how Pixie's uh, seamless data collection without code changes can do faster debugging and code level insights. Please give a warm welcome to Zamir Fozan. <laughs> 